Thanks, God, for the miracles, God, for the blessings, oh, Jesus. Lord, we sing how great is your name, the matchless name of Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord, we love you, Jesus. Thank you.
God to
you believe it this morning? As scripture has said, better is one day. Hallelujah. Let us shout, go out among the people. Lord, we thank you, Jesus. Come on, somebody. I love you, Lord, from my heart, oh God. I'd rather be in your presence, God, than anywhere else, oh Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Jesus. We're going to sing that little song that we sang last Sunday. You give life, you are love. You bring light to the darkness. You give hope, you restore. Every heart that is broken, great are you, Lord.
it out to pour him. Pour out our praise in your it out, praise. Jesus. It's in our love. So we pour out. across this room you could just simply give the Lord a praise according to hang on according to how good he's been to you and how great he really is only you know that we can't dictate that but whether it's just a worship whether it's a shout of praise whether it's a hand clap of thanksgiving whatever it is come on you know how good he's been you know how great he is Yes, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. In the name of 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 Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. What a mighty God. What a mighty God we serve. Are you thankful you know the true King of kings and Lord of lords? We magnify his mighty name, Jesus. In Jesus' precious name. Such a sweet presence of the Lord here today and we want his anointing to touch us as it already has in worship he responds to his people when they begin to worship him his word that is already anointed we're going to pray and ask God to touch us here today for the next few minutes wanting to have his way here today and so if you will pray with me one more time before we read here this morning God we want you to touch God, we want you to touch, Lord, this house today. God, your presence that we already feel, God, as we have lifted you in worship. God, and you have responded back. God, I pray, Lord, that your word that is anointed, God, let it go out. Lord, let it fall upon anointed ears, God, to hear. God, I pray, Lord, you anoint my lips, God, to speak your word. God, my mind, God, in the name of Jesus, God, we come against any adversary. God, we come against any enemy, Lord, that would try to distract in this place today. God, that your word would go forth. And God, we're going to give you all of the praise and all of the glory in the mighty name of Jesus because you truly are great, mighty, and awesome in Jesus' precious name. Everyone said amen. amen. If you'll turn to 2 Corinthians chapter 4, just allow me to read a couple of verses here and then I'll have you be seated here today. But 2 Corinthians chapter 4, starting at verse number 16, and we're going to go into uh, chapter 5. Of verse of, of 2 Corinthians and so uh, it'll lead right into it chapter 4 verse 16 says therefore we do not lose heart even though our outward man is perishing our inward man is being renewed day by day anybody glad we got something to hope in besides just what this earthly world has for our light affliction which is but for a moment is working for us a far more exceeding eternal weight of glory while we do not look at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporary. Everybody say they're temporary. temporary. But the things which are not seen are eternal. And then when you step into chapter 5, it continues. It says, for we know that if our earthly house is, this tent is destroyed, 
We have a building from God, a house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. For in this we groan earnestly, desiring to be clothed with our habitation which is from heaven. If indeed we have been clothed, we shall not be found naked. For we who are in this tent groan, being burdened, not because we want to be unclothed, but further clothed that more, at, or further clothed that mortality may be swallowed up by life. Now he who has prepared us for this very thing is God, who also has given us the Spirit as a guarantee. So we are always confident, knowing that while we are at home in the body, we are absent from the Lord. For we walk by faith, not by sight. We are confident, yes, well pleased rather to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord. Now, I'm going to go back and just, if you'll follow with me just one more time, 2 Corinthians 5, verses 1 through 8. I'm going to read it from the New Living Translation just to kind of give you a little bit of clarity of what's going on here. But it says, For we know that when this earthly tent we live in is taken down, that is, when we die and we leave this earthly body, we will have a house in heaven, an eternal body made for us by God Himself and not by human hands. We grow weary in our present bodies and we long to put on our heavenly bodies like new clothing for we will put on heavenly bodies. We will not be spirits without bodies. But while we live, verse 4 says, in these earthly bodies, we groan and sigh. But it's not that we want to die and get rid of these bodies that clothe us. Rather, we want to put on our new bodies so that these dying bodies will be swallowed up by life. He says, God himself has prepared us for this as a guarantee he's given us the Holy Spirit. So we are always confident, even though we know that as long as we live in these bodies, we are not at home with the Lord. For we live by believing and not by seeing. Yes, we are fully confident, and we would rather be away from these earthly bodies, for then we will be at home with the Lord. He said we're not desiring to die, But we are desiring to put on that new suit of clothes, that heavenly eternal body. I want to get rid of this tent and put on the house that's been built by God in the name of Jesus for eternal uh, eternity forevermore. That's what I'm looking forward to. I'm looking for the day that Jesus calls us back home. I'm looking for the opportunity to go home. I'm looking for the chance. I hope I can help you see this morning. That this journey we're on is a journey that's taken me home. And I'm excited about the fact of where I'm going. I'm not caught up with everything going on around me. I'm more caught up in the fact that one day, soon and very soon, the trumpet is going to sound and he's going to call us home with him. And I can take off this earthly tent and I can put on a heavenly garment and I'm going to be with him for eternity. Anybody excited about getting to go home? Jesus precious name God bless you you can be seated here this morning yesterday uh, the boys and I drove down to the lake by our house and uh, we, we saw all the vehicles that have been traveling down and and uh, everybody preparing for the Memorial Day weekend and camping and things of that nature and so as we drove through we wanted to go by and see uh, how many people were actually camping so we drove through the campsites just to see uh, how many were there and then we got into this discussion about camping and how there is a difference uh, in camping and RVing. There's a difference. And there were a lot of RVs out there, and if you have an RV, that's great, but I just don't think that's camping. And uh, we, we talked about this. It, it's different uh, to say that we're camping when we're in an RV that's got air conditioning, <laughs> a stove to cook on, and in most cases, a restroom. That's not really camping. And, and we, we enjoy going camping and, and having uh, a, a time, you know, in the tents and, and on air mattresses, and that's not even really camping. We have gone out and just done what they call primitive camping. I can't get Sister C to join me in the primitive camping, but the boys and I have been primitive camping. That's where, you know, you don't have no electricity at all. There's no running water anywhere, and, and you're just out there in a tent and Maybe an air mattress if you got some way to blow it up, but probably just a sleeping bag. And, and we've, we've had some of the best times camping. I enjoy 
uh, camping. I, I'm just telling you, some of the best food you will ever eat is around a campfire. I, I'm telling you, you can cook it at home and it don't taste the same. You get out around a campfire and start grilling up some, some steaks on, over the fire or you start fixing you a big old pot of, we used to put cornbread and stew inside of it and put it in a, in, a cro- in a pot out there over the stove and just begin to cook that thing and let it cook all day long and then you break the top off of it with that cornbread that's in there and get right in there. Oh man, there's nothing like eating out in the woods. Go catch you some fish and bring them in and put them on the grill. I remember primitive camping with those guys down in Jacksonville one time and we had gone fishing and uh, we were supposed to be fishing for our dinner and uh, we went out fishing and came back in and we had just a few fish for us to clean up and eat and I look over there and they've got all these little brim on the on the grill cooking it over a fire I said what are you doing with that they said we're gonna eat them I said that's bait that's not food I said that's a fish nugget that's not even a real fish You're going to spend more time trying to eat around the bones than you will ever get anything. But we've been camping and we enjoy camping. I I enjoy tent camping. Uh, I I enjoy doing it. We had a men's retreat a few years ago. Uh, It was the last time we camped as a men's retreat. We've stepped up the cabins. uh, But the last time we went out camping, we went to Fall Creek Falls. And uh, all of the men went out there and we set up our tents and we were just ready and and just having a blast, man, getting our fireplaces ready. We had our covered areas. And, man, we were just ready to go. And then a storm came in like it did last night. <laughs> I thought about those people down by the lake last night when the wind's blowing. And I thought, mm-hmm, I've been there before. And it got so bad when we were there camping that time, I just folded up the tent, threw it in the back of the truck, got in the truck and went to sleep because it was over. You couldn't stay dry. I don't care what you tried to do. You were wet and it just didn't matter. And but we, we enjoy camping, but I, I understand very, very quickly that uh, it's something that is just temporary. And the word began to talk about these tents, and, and, and camping, camping in tents is fun. I, I enjoy camping in tents, but the problem is it's not going to be my permanent residence. As much as I enjoy it, it's not my permanent residence. No matter the scenery, no matter how great the outdoor feeling is, Uh, no matter how wonderful it is on the outside, I promise you I'm always looking forward to the journey home. I'm always looking forward to the opportunity to go home because I can get back in my own bed, off the ground, in my own bed, in the place that I cherish, in the place that we love. It's the place we call home. And we enjoy being home. Much like camping in tents for us is not permanent. The children of Israel in their mass exodus from Egypt experienced similar situations. You can go back and read through the book of Exodus and see this tremendous story after all of the plagues that Pharaoh uh, had to go through to finally decide to let the children of Israel go. He he releases them under Moses' command and they they start this trek to the promised land. 600,000 of them plus men and women. Just imagine that moving party. (laughs) 600,000 men plus the women and children just moving through this mass exodus out of Egypt. And, and, and they start this trek to the promised land. And they, they, they had been in Egypt for 430 years. Generations had passed. And they finally got an opportunity to leave and head to the promised land that they had heard so much about. They had heard so much about it, and God gets them out of Egypt, first of all, if that's not a great miracle, but then he leads them with a cloud by day and a, and a pillar of fire by night. And he destroys a, a, an Egyptian army in the Red Sea, and he, he turns bitter water to sweet water, and then he, he gives them quail and manna every day, and, and then he allows water to come from a rock in a different instance when they were all thirsty and again complaining that they didn't have anything. And all of these things take place. They get to the edge of the promised land. They've sent spies in to check it out. In the promised land, there's milk and honey and there's grapes that are just so big it took two men to carry them in. And and everything that God promised them, everything that they had heard about, everything they had looked forward to, all of it is in the promised land. They get to the edge of the promised land after God had carried them through all of the challenges of the journey. They are finally home. And they start complaining again. So much so that God just gets upset with them. And if you go back and look at the book of Numbers, it tells us God finally had enough with them. 
and tells them that the ones that are 20 and over aren't going to see the promised land. All of you just got banished from the promised land. The only ones in that group that made it was Joshua and Caleb. Now, understand something. In all of this thing, I understand the journey And I understand that it probably got rough at times. And I understand it probably got difficult at times. And I understand that they probably saw some major, major challenges in that process. But what I wish they would have understood from Joshua and Caleb is people, please hear me. We're almost home. We're right on the edge of being home. We're right on the edge of the promise that God has given us. We're right on the edge. And so if I could translate that to you this morning, I would tell you, I know times get tough, and I know there's battles, and I know there's struggles, and I know we go through stuff and junk and things in our lives, but folks, hear me this morning, we are on the edge of almost being home. It's coming sooner than we think. It's coming sooner than you know. God's going to have Gabriel grab that trumpet and blow that horn, and we're all going to be taken home. We're almost there. Don't stop now. It's the journey home. It's the battle home. He's carried us this far. He'll carry us all the way. The Israelites journeyed through the desert wilderness and they they dwelled in tents on their way to the promised land. Understand something, life is like this journey. They dwelled in those tents and everything that they were doing was temporary. And life is much like this journey of the Israelites. Life uh, is very much temporary. Everything in this world is temporary. Everything around us is temporary. This is not the place where we stay. It's the place we journey through. This is not the place that we stop and stay. This is the place we journey through. We pass through this world because it's not our home. It's a temporary existence. Like camping. We're we're not here permanently. We're just passing through. As much as I enjoy it, that's not where I want to take up residence. That's not where I want to stay in that tent forever. Everything in this world changes. Every circumstance, every experience, every stage of life, you need to understand they're just tents. They're temporary. We we dwell in one season and then we move on to another season. Childhood was a tent and then you moved on. Your, Your good times, your bad times, your successes, your failures, your problems, your joys, your sorrows, your adulthood, even your old age. They're all stages of life and they are tents that were there and never meant to be permanent. They're just temporary. All of those stages of life are just temporary. Even our physical being is temporary and always changing. Hmm. Can anybody admit to the fact that you know this physical body's changing? Hmm. Whew. I decided to play knocker ball with young people last weekend and I'm still punishing from it. I'm still hurting from it. I'm still limping around. And, and, I, and, and now they're going to they're gonna want to skate tonight. <laughs> They're going to play softball tomorrow and hike to the falls. I'm just going to claim some kind of, you know, disability or something so I can't do any of it. Because this, this physical body changes. We, we, we get older and, 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 and our strength isn't what it used to be. And, and we get aches and we get pain. It's changing. But guess what? It's because it's just temporary. This isn't permanent. This stuff I've got on right now is not permanent. This clothing that I'm wearing right now of this fleshly body is not permanent. I'm looking forward to the day that God clothes me in eternity and I get a new set of clothes. I get a new body. I get get a new eternal being. That's what I'm looking forward to. These things become being so fragile serve to us as a reminder that this world is not my home. I'm just journeying through it. Hebrews 11 tells the story of Abraham in chapter 11, verses 8 through 16. says, By faith Abraham obeyed when he was called to go out into the place which he would receive an inheritance. And he went out not knowing where he was going. And by faith he dwelt in the land of promise as in a foreign country, dwelling in tents with Isaac and Jacob, the heirs with him of the same promise. For he waited for the city which has foundations. You don't have a foundation in a tent. He said he was waiting for a city that had foundations whose builder and maker is God. 
It says in verse 11 that by faith Sarah herself also received strength to conceive seed and she bore a child when she was at past the age because she judged him faithful who had promised. And so verse 12 says, Therefore from one man and him who is as good as dead, he was an old man, were born as many as the stars of the sky and multitude innumerable as the sand which is by the seashore. These all died in faith. Watch, not having received the promises, but seeing them afar off, were assured of them and embraced them and confessed that they were strangers and pilgrims on this earth. I don't belong here. For those who say such things declare plainly that they seek a homeland. They seek a place. And truly, if they had called to mind the country from which they had come out, they would have had opportunity to return. He said if they'd have talked about where they came from, then they'd have wanted to go back. But I don't want to go back to anything that I've come from. Listen, let me put it to you spiritually. I don't want to go back to anything that God's brought me out of. The children of Israel don't really, they thought they wanted to go back to Egypt, but it's only because they got their eyes off of the promised land. They got their eyes off of home and where they were headed. But as long as I keep my eyes on home, there's nothing in my past that I want to go back to. There's nothing in my past that I want to have. I want to keep marching and keep pressing and keep pushing. It's all temporary. I'm working on my journey home. Verse 16, he said, but now they desire a better, that is, a heavenly country. Therefore, God is not ashamed to be called their God. He has prepared a city for them. Look at somebody next to you and say, this world's not my home. Abraham pursued the promise knowing that everything else was just temporary. Everything else around him was just temporary. These tents we're living in, it's just temporary. The entry into the promised land didn't happen until Joshua and Caleb that we mentioned earlier. And, but he always knew that there was a promised land and he continued on that journey home. Brother Robinson came up here and talked about uh, building fun and the things that are happening. You know what? We may not see the fruition, everything that God's got planned for new life and for what's going on in the cat. We may not see it all. We may pass from this life before it happens, but there's generations coming up behind us. And just like Abraham, he said, you know what? I may not make it, but I'm going to continue to pursue after it. And if I'll tell every generation behind me that this is not my home, this is not where we're going to stay. We got a place to go. We got a place we're moving forward to. He tells every generation behind him, we're headed to a journey. We're headed to a place. We're headed to a home. And understand, this is not where we belong. We're looking for a city whose foundation have been built by God himself please understand everything around us is temporary I'm headed to a place I'm on a journey home he never let things around him stop him from pursuing his promise he he headed for the eternal and everything else around him was just temporary the choice you make please understand will have an impact on other people around you where you pitch your tent is never meant to be homestead. It's just a temporary stop. It's a sad story in Genesis 13, verse 11 through 13. It says, Then Lot chose for himself all the plain of Jordan, and Lot journeyed east. And they separated from each other, him and Abraham. Lot made a choice. Verse 12 says, Abraham dwelt in the land of Canaan, and Lot dwelt in the cities of the plain, and pitched his tent even as far as Sodom. But the men of Sodom were exceedingly wicked and sinful against the Lord. Lot pitched his tent in Sodom and made it home for his family. I don't know if you understand ultimately that the choice to stop the journey and take up residence in a place that he did not belong. Instead of journeying through, I'm just passing through. This is just a journey to get me home. This is just a journey to my promised land. I, this is just a journey. Ultimately, his choice to stop the journey and take up residence in a place that he didn't belong. And when he took up residence in a place he didn't belong, it led to the, to the loss of his home and forever affected future generations behind him because he made a choice to stay somewhere that wasn't his home. Remind your family 
You need to remind your children. Why is it important that I bring my children to church? Why is it important that I bring them to Sunday school? Because I'm reminding my children that we, this is not our home. We're headed to a much better place. Why is it important that I come to church? Why is it important I bring my family to the house of God for worship? Why is it important that I lead them this way? Because I want them to understand this world is not my home. We're headed to a better place. I want each and every one of us to make it to heaven. I want generations behind me to understand this world is not our home. We, we have a much better place that we're headed to. We're on a journey home. We're on a journey home and we can't put roots in this world because we were never meant to stay here don't put your roots down in this world because we're never been meant to stay here god is building a city and everything else is just tense it's just it's just temporary but just as the israelites were traveling through strange lands in an effort to reach the promised land we also are traveling through to a place that we will exchange the temporary for the everlasting we are traveling to our promised land we are traveling to heaven we're on a journey and this principle needs to be applied in everything we do and everything we experience please hear me this morning no matter what happens in this world or in our lives we must always remember we are not home we are only passing through let me let me put it to you this way every problem will pass every trial will pass every temptation will pass every burden will fade because this is not my home i'm just journeying through and if you ever look at it as being your final destination then the problems don't leave the trials don't leave the situations don't leave but i'm just understanding they're just temporary for me what i'm going through right now is not what i'm always going to face it's just temporary because i'm on a journey home i'm on a journey to the promised land and one day soon and very soon the trumpet going to sound and he's going to pull me out of here and I'm going to be where there's no more hurt, no more pain, no more heartache, no more sorrow, no more sickness. I want somebody to hear me today. I'm on my way home. I'm on a journey home. We, we, we must just like camp and make sure we journey through this life and make sure that we do it lightly. Don't overload yourself and make the journey difficult because that's when you decide to stop and take up residence because the journey just became too tough. I don't know if you understand what I just told you. When we go camping, we don't bring the whole house with us. When we go camping, we can't bring everything with us because it's just temporary. First of all, I don't have room for all of it. But the problem is, if we make camping as comfortable as home, then we're no longer going to leave the campsite. We're going to always stay there and take up residence. So I don't, I don't know if you're following me here, but listen to me. On the journey home, we got to lighten our load just a little bit. There's some burdens I don't want to take with me. There's some troubles I don't want to take with me. There's some stuff I'm going to quit hanging on to. Some of you have been holding on to hurts and pain so long, it's become part of your backpack. Like you need it for survival. You need to understand, I don't need any of that stuff for survival. I'm on my way home. I'm going to a better place. This is just temporary. I don't need any of that stuff. We get ourselves packed down so much that we can't seem to walk anymore. And we get to the point where everything gets so difficult, we decide, I'm done with this journey. I'm done traveling. I'm just going to stay here. I'm not going to go any further. Here's what you need to understand. The things around us will not determine our life. The scenery, the circumstances, the struggles... Do not dictate my life because this is not home. This is not home. It's not the journey, but it's the destination that I keep in my sights. I, I'm headed for a place. I'm headed for a home. Abraham said, I, I may not see it, but I know it's there. And I'm going to continue to head towards that. And it wasn't until generations after generations after generations that they finally entered the promised land. But they remember the stories from way back when that God has got a promised land for his people. He's going to get us home he said i'm looking for a city whose builder and maker is the lord it's got a foundation it's not a tent it's not temporary it's my eternal destination i got to keep my eyes focused i got to keep my heart fixed on the destination my promised land heaven everything else is just temporary hear me this morning 
all the stuff we try to accumulate and all the things we try to do and not that any of that is wrong and not that any of that stuff, but if it's weighing you down from the journey, you might want to let go of some of it. But the reality is it's all just temporary. I used to say that I've never seen a hearse pulling a U-Haul, but it wasn't true because I found a picture on line somewhere where somebody had a hearse with a U-Haul behind it. And I thought, well, I guess I got to change that whole message because apparently somebody did. Problem was it was somebody that had bought a used hearse <laughs> and they were pulling a trailer behind it. And somebody snapped the picture and said, well, there went all those messages y'all been preaching about not taking a trailer with you when you go. <laughs> Problem is they might have taken the trailer, but they didn't bury everything with them because the reality is you don't take none of it with you. It's like that story of the woman whose husband was just so mean and hateful to her all their married life and he accumulated money and he'd never let her have any of it and he had thousands upon thousands hundreds of thousands of dollars and he'd never let her have any of it and he just was mean and rude and and just you know i guess maybe she looked for the day that he finally passed from this life and the day was coming and he was sick and dying and he told his wife he said when i die he said i want you to put, bury me with all of my money all of my money's going with me when I die, and so you're going to bury me with all of my money. And others around had heard that story, and eventually he passed away, and they're all at the funeral home at the, uh, you know, at the, at the, uh, the, the viewing, and, and some of the people come up to the lady, and they said to her, they said, are you really going to do what he said? Are you really going to bury him with all of his money? And she said, I made him a promise. I've got to stick to, to, stick to what I said. And he, she said, I can't lie. I, I have to do exactly what I told him I would do. And so just before they closed the casket, she walked up and she placed a check in the casket. <laughs> yeah. All the cash she hung on to, gave him the check. <laughs> if you can cash out where you're going, Bubba, give it a good shot. But I'm sticking to what I'm telling you. The reality is we don't take any of it with us when we go. None of it. It's all temporary. And so I better make sure that my focus and everything that I'm doing, everything I'm teaching my family, everything I'm showing generations behind me is that we are on a journey home. We're headed to a place whose builder and maker is the Lord. I look forward to the day he calls me home. Anybody excited about the journey going home? Anybody excited about one day getting to be in heaven? I want music to come. I got to keep my eyes focused. Everything else is temporary. The sights may be nice and the locations may be seeming pristine, but, but I, I must remember this is not my home. I'm going to a city. The reality is we don't have much farther. We will soon be home. James 4 and 13 says, Come now, you who say today or tomorrow we will go in such and such a city and spend a year there and buy and sell and make a profit. It says, verse 14, he says, Whereas you do not know what will happen tomorrow, for what is your life? It's even a vapor that appears for a little time and then vanishes away what you have to understand is what I'm leaving behind is far greater than money it's far greater than possessions what I need to leave behind to my children what I need to leave behind to generations following after me is that we are headed to a place we are headed to a city and everything that is here is just temporary don't get caught up in stuff and things and get weighted down that you decide, you know what, it's just too difficult to journey any further. I'm just going to stop right here. This is going to be home. Let me, let me tell you something. And in, in, I looked up, I read a lot of stuff, and I don't have time this morning to tell you all of it, but if you go back and look at the history of the move that took place in this great country when people moved west and started this trek and this journey out to the west, they, they faced so many challenges, struggles, and sickness, and attacks and all of those things that that they faced but they they pushed through all of it because they were headed to a better place where i'm going is going to be a better place where i'm headed is going to be a better place it might be tough and it it might be difficult but for generations to come it's going to be a better place for our family it was said and i read a couple of different places that between i think it was 1840 and 1848 that 
there was an estimated 11,500 people that headed out to California. Made that trek out to California. It's like a four-month journey to head out to California. But they said out of that 11,500, only 3,000 made it. Not because they died or, 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 or something took their lives. There may have been some of that in some situations. But the reason that they all didn't make it is because some of them stopped in other places. And they ultimately decided that, you know what? This will work right here for me. I, I don't need to push all the way through. I, I, I don't want to take any more of this tr- struggle. and I, I don't want to take any more of this journey. I, I'm just going to stop right here. And so out of 11,500 in that time period, only 3,000 of them said, you know what? The journey is worth it because where I'm headed is going to be a better place. I don't know if you realize that I know it gets difficult in life and I know there's struggles and battles and things that go on, but the reality is where I'm headed... I don't know if you can even imagine streets of gold and walls of jasper and gates of pearl and if you can even imagine a place where there's no more hurt and no more pain and no more sadness, no more heartache. I don't know if you can imagine a place where we spend our day worshiping and magnifying the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. I don't know if you can even picture that, but if you get that in your mind and realize that's where I'm headed, you don't let these things of life stop you and say, well, maybe it's not real. Out of that 11,500, only three of them kept that vision. Others said, well, it may not be what everybody says it is. It may, be not, it may not be everything everybody's talked about and everybody's said that it is. And, 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 and maybe there's people, and I, I know there's some of them that have questioned whether heaven's even real or not. How many of you believe this word? You believe the stories in this word? You believe everything that's been put out in this word? Do you, do you believe the stories of David and Goliath and him swinging a stone and knocking down a big nine foot giant going up, cutting his head? Everybody believe that story? You believe Jonah getting swallowed up by a big fish out in the water and hanging out in his belly for three days? <laughs> we can believe that. But you don't believe that there's a place prepared for you. You don't believe that there's a promised land that he said this is where you're going to head one day and whether you make it all the way the trumpet sounds or you your time comes before that and you you meet him from the grave i understand as abraham did he said i know there's a place i know there's a place i know there's a place that's got a foundation built it's not temporary like these tents it's not temporary like this stuff around me as as, as second corinthians said I, I get to take off this temporary body and put on an eternal body and and, and it's all going to be different because i'm headed to a place one day soon and very soon a lot of old songs we used to sing a lot of them had to do with heaven there's one of them we used to sing this world is not my home I'm just a passing through my treasures are laid up somewhere beyond the blue angels beckon me to heaven's open door I can't feel at home in this world anymore I started putting all them songs I made a whole new song because I started putting all of them together started thinking about all the different songs that talked about going home and talked about where we were headed and talked about one day soon and very soon we used to sing soon and very soon we are going to see the king Sometimes I wonder if we've forgotten that we're on a journey home. Sometimes I wonder if we've got caught up in everything going on around us that we forgot we're on a journey home. And some of us have put down our tents and we've said, you know what, I think I'll just stay here. I kind of like the scenery. I kind of like listening to the water running by. I think I'll just stay here. When in reality, God never intended for us to stay there. All of the mistakes that Lot made and everything that followed after was because he made a decision to take up residence in a place he didn't belong. Generations after us, generations to follow us are looking for the same thing. They're looking for a promise. They're looking for something that you and I can see in a distance. Abraham didn't make it, but he could see it in a distance. He said, one day soon, I'm going to make it home. I want you to stand with me this morning.
And I just wonder here today if all across this room we could just simply bow our heads. And I know we may not be running the aisles today, but maybe we should be. Seems like we don't talk about going home too much anymore because I don't know if people think it's depressing because then you're talking about me leaving my stuff and leaving my things and leaving the things I have around me. They're just so important to me. And the reality is my family's important to me. My, my spouse and my children and my things that I have, it's important to me, but nothing, nothing is more important to me than making it home making it to that place each and every one of you know it doesn't matter even when we go on vacation even when we go away the one thing we always look forward to is that journey home we always look forward to getting back home and back to the house and being back where we're comfortable and back where the things are that's where i want to be is back home well it's the same spiritual journey that we're on right now i want to make it home and so i wonder as every head is bowed and we begin to pray here today and we we open this altar if you would love to come today and just begin to talk to the Lord and ask Him, you know, God, I need you to rekindle a burden inside of me. I need you to remind me, God, of the journey that I'm taking home. Scriptures that I have read here today remind me of the journey that I'm taking home and realize that I'm headed to a place and where I'm at is not forever. God, where I'm at is not my final destination, but God, it's all just temporary. And I don't know if you caught on to what I tried to tell you this morning, but the trials that you're facing and the trouble that you're going through and the, the difficulties you're having, those are just temporary as well. As long as you're headed on a journey home, it's all just temporary. All of the hurt and heartache and all of the things I'm facing, it's all just temporary. And it's going to be okay because I'm going to make it through on the other side and I've got something waiting on me. I've got a God waiting on me. I've got doors standing wide open waiting on me to come. It's the journey of trying to make home. Don't be weighted down by all of the things of life. Don't be weighted down by all the things that are around you. I, I can't be weighted down in this journey because the day just might come when the trumpet sounds and I don't need anything weighting me down. I need to be ready to go when he calls. And so I ask you this morning if you would just begin to pray and begin to talk to the Lord and however you feel comfortable. We have guests here today and I want you just to be as comfortable as you can. But begin to talk to the Lord and God, I need you to re- address some things in my life and God I need you to readdress some things in me God because this really is not my home I'm just passing through this is not my home I'm on a journey to another place God this morning I pray for every person in this room God I pray for every individual in this room God I pray for every home represented in this room I pray for every family represented in this room right now God, I pray, Lord, that you would help each and every one of us, God, to realize once again, God, what's important in our lives and, God, where we're headed. And if this journey that we're on has taken us to a place that is a, a final destination, a final resting place. God, the place that our elders told us about. God, and the, the place that others have told us that have gone on before us about heaven and, and about the wonderful things that we're going to find there, about the promises that God has made to us. God, never let us lose sight, God, that we're on a journey home and this is not my home and everything around me is just temporary and the next time the adversary comes against me, I'm going to remind him that this is not my home. I'm headed to a better place. I'm headed to a promised land and you're just temporary in my life and all the struggle and all the all the battles and all the conflict I have in my life, God, it's all just temporary because I'm headed to a place. In Jesus' precious name. If you would like, why don't you come down this morning and just reaffirm that with the Lord today. I'm headed to a place. Some of us need to make sure we remind our families that we're headed to a place. There's a place coming that's going to be so much better than where we are now. There's a, there's a final reward. And the reason 
we live the life we live and the reason we do the things we do is because uh, this is not my home. I'm, I'm headed to a different place. I'm, I'm headed to another place and I'm headed to my promised land and that's why we do what we do. Why do we come to church so much, Dad? And why are we so involved in church, Mom? It's because we're headed to a place and this is just a journey that I'm on getting me home because I'm headed to a place called home. Let's pray here this morning. God, we love you, Jesus. In Jesus' precious name. No I'm going to a city where Jesus is the light. It's gonna sound. 